In this video, we're going to talk about the elastic energy associated with dislocations. We have dislocations present in the material that increases the energy of the system overall because of the distortions that they cause in the lattice. And this is true whether we have an edge dislocation or a screw dislocation. So we're going to take a look at what the equation is for elastic energy and talk a little bit about what the values might actually be. So we can recall that the equation for elastic energy is simply one half the stress times the strain. And so this is true also for dislocation. So this is the stress caused by the dislocation and this is the strain or distortion in the lattice attributed to the dislocation. Without actually deriving the equation, we'll just give the full equation for the elastic energy associated with a dislocation. So this equation here gives the elastic energy associated with dislocations. G is the shear modulus, as usual. B is the magnitude of the Burgers vector. This term down here that's in orange, this one minus nu, this is only in the equation if we have an edge dislocation. So edge dislocations only. We can keep looking here through the equation. We have ln of, of capital R over small r. Let me talk about what these mean for a minute. This big R, this is the outer radius associated with a dislocation. So if we imagine that we have some volume of material and we have several dislocations in it, then each of these sort of has its own volume associated with it. And so you can imagine some sort of unique volume to each dislocation, like this. And so this would be capital R, the outer radius of the volume associated with that particular dislocation. R naught is the inner radius or core radius. And uh, if we have a dislocation, we know that as you get nearer to the, to the dislocation line, that the stress goes to infinity. And that's not really true. And so the core radius is sort of what we exclude from right around the dislocation so that we are assuming elastic deformation only. And then the last uh, part of this equation, we have nu here again, the Poisson's ratio. And then we have alpha, and alpha helps us to characterize the kind of dislocation that it is. So this alpha is the angle between the Burgers vector and the dislocation line. So alpha is zero when we have a screw dislocation and alpha is 90 when we have an edge dislocation, but it's possible that we might also have mixed dislocations in there and so alpha accommodates that, that concept. Um, R naught is something that we normally sort of assume as a constant. And so really if we want to find the elastic energy associated with a dislocation, what we need to do is that we need to find a value for big R, the spacing between dislocations. So let's look at how we would do that. Let's start by doing this in two dimensions because that's a little bit easier. And let's assume that we have this square array of dislocations and these dislocations have a spacing L between them in this direction and also L between them in this direction. So in 2D then, our area is simply L squared. And in this case, we have one dislocation in that area L squared, because you can sort of imagine that each of these is just contributing one or that we could recenter it. And so in a unit area, that's really what we want to know. In a unit area, if we have then row dislocations, we can say that the dislocation density is simply the inverse of the area. Okay, and so 
That's how we define a dislocation density, the number of dislocations per unit area. Really, we have three-dimensional materials, and so we want to deal with the three-dimensional dislocation density, and so we approximate R, that spacing, to simply be the inverse square root of the dislocation density. The units on dislocation density are length of dislocation per unit volume. Right, so it would be sort of meters per meter cubed. Sometimes this ends up given as sort of per centimeter squared. Let's then look at sort of a rule of thumb for the elastic energy of a dislocation and compare what we would find for an edge and a screw dislocation. So the equation that we had there for the elastic energy is somewhat complicated and so it's, it's very commonly used instead that the elastic energy of a dislocation is approximated simply as gb squared over 2 or gb squared over 2 times 1 minus nu. So the one with the 1 minus nu is for the edge dislocation, and this one is for the screw dislocations, if we had all of one type or all of another. And that's really not true, so sort of in general this equation is the one that's taken to approximate the elastic energy of dislocations. Now obviously we've sort of uh, made a, an assumption here about what the dislocation spacing is and therefore the dislocation density. And this approximation is essentially for sort of an annealed material where the dislocation density is not very high. If the dislocation density were higher, then the elastic energy contributed by dislocations would also be a fair amount higher. Let's take an, a look at an example now, though, just so that we can see the magnitude of what this energy might be. So let's consider this example. Here's what we're given. We're given that we have a one cubic centimeter of material with a dislocation density of 10 to the 14th per meter squared, which is sort of a moderate dislocation density. Shear modulus of 70 GPA, the Burgers vector is 0.25 nanometers, and our Poisson's ratio is 0.3. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the total length of dislocations that are present. We see that the length is equal to the dislocation density times the volume, and this gives us a total of 10 to the 8th meters of dislocation line just in this little one centimeter cube. The next thing we want to do then is to find capital R, the dislocation spacing. We find R through this relationship, one over the square root of L, and we end up with then 10 to the negative seven meters. So this is telling us that our dislocations are 100 nanometers apart. So we have our value for capital R, and we're ready to move on and make our calculation. We have to make a couple of assumptions here. The first one is that the dislocations are all edge, so we're going to assume that they are all edge, and we are also going to assume that the value of small r is four times the Burgers vector. This equation here will give us the elastic energy for one of the dislocations. So we have g, we have b squared, 4 pi 1 minus the Poisson's ratio, and then we have ln of, of big R divided by small r. We've left out the last term because of the fact that they're all edge dislocations and it goes to 1. If we want to know the total energy, however, we also need to multiply by the line length of dislocations. So we will also multiply then by 10 to the 8th meters of dislocation. So this gives us our total elastic energy. 
And if we make that calculation, we find that the value is 0.23 joules. So this energy is actually quite small. The dislocations are not contributing in a very significant way to the overall energy. However, it's important to note that it's certainly not zero and that at the local scale, the elastic energy of, of dislocations should not be ignored.